You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Ah, what's going on everybody? Kevin here and I'm uh, sitting on a very blue couch. Is it blue? I'm not sure. Is it purple? I don't know. Um, colorblind, what can I say? But it's funny. It's very funny because today's Ask Cam Kevin, oh, it's a little bit of a rant and then maybe we'll get up and do something else because maybe this topic has been uh, talked to death. I don't know. But I got an Ask Cam Kevin from Rainy Parker. And Rainy asks this, okay, now take into consideration why the color of the uh, couch comes into play. As you guys know, I'm colorblind, uh, and so Rainy asks this, uh, I know you're not into morphs, but what are your thoughts on the spider python argument? Whether or not it's moral to breed them with their wobble? All right, good question, good question. Man, oh man, what an answer. Uh, shouldn't breed them, that simple. Um, I have a big problem with uh, treating um, reptiles like um, collecting cards uh, or, or something, a trinket of sorts, you know? So for me, um, you know, uh, ball pythons, it's a strange, strange subculture of a subculture of reptile people. Um, and I know a lot of people that are into it and they love the different color variations and the morphs or whatever. Um, that has never been something that I was 100% into. Um, is it exciting when something strange hatches out of you know your eggs, like my tortoise eggs, when I get really bizarre looking elongated tortoises, or my crazy like cherry head tortoises? Um, yeah, that's exciting. Or for the fact that I was gifted an albino uh, sulcata tortoise. Um, personally for me, morphs are not something that I ever go out looking for. I just happen to enjoy natural looking reptiles. I like to see them interact with an environment. I like to create habitats for them. That's kind of what I'm into. So, uh, you know, when I look at, um, you know, how the spider ball pythons wobble, whether it's a little bit of a wobble or whether it's a really grotesque, upside down, can't strike at food, being completely helpless if it weren't for a human being to feed it, I just would assume not do it, man. I, I think it's completely immoral. I think that it's something that is done purely out of, you know, the fact they want to sell these animals, to be perfectly honest. It's kind of greed. Um, and if you guys have watched my channel um, and videos for any length of time, you know that I'm really trying to get across the message of uh, caring for these animals and doing the best thing for them. Um, you know, which is why husbandry is so important so we don't get metabolic bone disease or we don't get any issues with the animals. Um, with the morph situation is, um, I think there's a tendency for many of those breeders to look at the animals um, as dollar signs and not as living things. Um, why breed something that's going to come out so kinked and bizarre looking um, like some of these, I don't even know the morphs, like cinnamon morphs, I have no idea. I'm, I gotta be honest and upfront, I just am not knowledgeable on those. But if you are breeding something back to uh, itself and it keeps producing a high percentage of offspring that have genetic defects, well, you're going against nature. Nature's whole deal is about variation. And those variations are what enable uh, animals to adapt evolve and kind of survive in the biosphere on earth. Uh, basically um, there's something called the red queen theory, okay, which is an interesting theory um, and I don't want to get too into it because I'm, I don't know the whole ins and outs but you guys can google it and check it out. Red queen theory, uh, people believe, scientists believe, came up because uh, why sexual reproduction uh, came about, okay. And they think it came about because for many, many years, uh, these multicellular organisms were reproducing asexually, right? So there are basic clones of the parent organism. And if you have a clone of the parent organism, you have an exact replica of that organism. And so therefore, any weakness that that uh, parent organism had, the offspring has. 
But what do we know about bacteria and viruses? They replicate very, very quickly. So we think, or scientists think, that sexual reproduction came about to kind of outcompete or try and stay one step ahead of bacteria and viruses that could harm these organisms. Because if you have some DNA from a, from a male and some DNA from a female, once they get together, you get a brand new organism. You'll have some weaknesses, but you'll have some new strengths, or you'll have some, some strengths and some new weaknesses. So it's basically a way to kind of throw the bacteria off, to throw these uh, pathogens uh, and race against them and evolve a stronger immune system. Now, I'm totally butchering that theory. I'm sure I should have done a little bit more research on it, but that's okay. I'm giving you guys a little bit of an idea and you can go off and do it on your own. Now, sexual reproduction, why I got into that is because basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to create variety. It's trying, it's, you know, evolution doesn't stop. It's ongoing as the world is ongoing. And so there are going to be new kind of stimuli that are gonna affect these organisms. So when we take, oh, I don't know, ball pythons or some breeds of domestic dogs and keep breeding them back to each other, you're actually creating a lot of problems, you're weakening the animal, and as we know with dogs, some bulldogs can't breathe well, some dogs have bad hips, uh, it's just tampering with nature. Now, I don't think that it's all bad. I think that there are, you know, certain morphs that basically it's a paint job, it's color. Uh, could that animal survive in the wild? No, so you're basically creating a domestic type of that animal. Uh, as long as the animal's quality of life is good, I think that's no problem. Um, and for those of you who want to get into the comments below and say, well, should we be euthanizing, um, you know, autistic people or mentally handicapped people? Uh, they didn't choose uh, that life, you see. Um, so basically, you know, that's a human being and they weren't selectively bred for that. But if you're selectively breeding something and you know that there's going to be a very high risk of um, genetic defects. I just don't think it's a good idea. I think it is immoral um, because that is now a life and many people, uh, they just euthanize them or feed them off to something, which is, I personally am not going to sit here and cry about it, um, but it is kind of cruel um, if you cannot bring that life into the world. There's also an interesting book I read some years ago called War Against the Weak. And if you are concerned about human beings doing this, well, look no further than the United States. Uh, back in the early part of the 20th century, there was something called eugenics. And uh, they took it to a whole nother level. They were actually, there were uh, mental institutions that were, um, youth, they were actually um, sterilizing mentally handicapped people, people uh, African descent, um, Native American people. Uh, this is called eugenics and it was practiced in this country in the early 20th century and it was completely immoral because what they were also doing is they were basically stopping or they weren't letting the people know that they were being sterilized. So it's a very very uh, crazy book. It's called War Against the Weak and they talk about how uh, the Nazis in Germany got the idea uh, for their sterilization of Jews and gypsies and mentally handicapped from these scientists that were working in the United States in the early 20th century. It was really a crazy book. Um, now I know we just took a left turn, uh, but it's all kind of wrapped together. It's a very interesting topic. Um, you know, I personally, why I love reptiles and why I breed the reptiles I breed is of course I do sell some of them um, but it's also about breeding the basically the typical variant. Uh, breeding an animal um, especially with tortoise breeders we really love like reproducing these animals and creating living arcs for them to survive. Um, that's at least why I like doing it because I believe that if there is a capitalism with a conscience then conservation through uh, capitalism uh, is a 
beneficial thing because if we remove the ability or if we remove the need to wild collect these animals, you're then going to allow wild animals to be wild. You'll have a perfect representation, a healthy representation of that animal in captivity um, and you get a healthier animal that you can then have as a pet or you can be a caretaker of and I think that's a really fantastic thing because it really teaches so many of us how to care for our wild animals and how to raise up an animal. I think it's very important that humans and animals uh, do have this kind of close proximity because if we take that away then we're going to wind up with a generation of people that just don't have any care about the wild, about animals in general, if we remove ourselves too far. Um, but back to the uh, ball python argument, the, the morphs and things like that, um, it's just not something I like because, uh, just to kind of surmise it and, you know, summarize everything here, um, they, I don't like it because they become objects and not living things. And too many times it's easy to just cast those animals aside um, for a profit. So I think the industry needs to look at itself and needs to kind of uh, do the right thing. You know what I mean? If something doesn't have a good quality of life, then I don't think it should be existing. You know, because the care it would need uh, is probably beyond most people to really do day in and day out. So there you have it. That's my thought on the uh, spider ball python issue. Uh, I did have another question. It's kind of a long Camp Cannon episode. We're already at 11 uh, Ask Camp Cannon episode. We're already at like 11 minutes, 12 minutes, but we're going to keep going. I told you I was going to rant. Now you know my, th now you know my whole deal. Uh, I did have another question that I can answer today. It's about uh, invasives. I believe it was Cindy Hope, and Cindy was asking, right, am I worried, let's get outside. Hi, we're going mobile. Uh, am I worried about all the tadpoles that have recently sprung up inside my Aquascape Ecosystem rec pond? So uh, let's get out here and have a look. So you'll notice the pond is really beautiful, really clear, and uh, there's not a lot of tadpoles left. In fact, the tadpoles have turned into little toadlets. And we're gonna find some right now and I'll show you. Um, I knew this would happen. There's some bumping around right there, you see them? Here's some little cane toad hatchlings or uh, toadlets. Uh, they've recently metamorphosized. So what happens is they stay close to the water here for a little while. Uh, and then the next heavy rain, they're going to leave. But they're just kind of making use of some of these rock crevices and so on. Um, what does happen um, is I'm not really worried about any of my tortoises eating them because that was part of her question. She was asking, am I worried about the tortoises ingesting them? And the answer is no, because my tortoises are actually herbivores. Uh, the turtles themselves, believe it or not, they're pretty smart. They realize that they do not want to eat that. Uh, it depends how many they eat, uh, whether or not how sick they'll get. Um, but I have not lost any tortoise or turtle to that. Now, I did lose a couple of cichlids early on when I first put them in the pond. I lost about three, and I believe they ate some of the tadpoles. Uh, but since then, I, you, gotta, you gotta realize they're pretty smart fish. And once they saw their little brethren, here's some more of these little toads bopping around. You see them all? Look at this. They're just bopping everywhere. But once the, once the fish realized that they were having problems, let's get this little dude, that they were having problems, uh, that their brethren were having, are you eating this? Were having problems, uh, then they realized that uh, it's not a good thing to eat. So here is a baby cane toad, a little toadlet, uh, right there and uh, well I'm just gonna let them hop away now of course many of these won't survive um, they do die out that's why reptiles and amphibians have a lot of babies but the cane toad man it is a problem here in South Florida uh, last night actually I uh, heard some toad calls from the pond itself and what I did was came out here with my flashlight and a net and I scooped out eight large um, cane toads. And I hate doing it, guys, but I killed them. Um, I really hate doing it. 
uh, it, I take no pleasure at all. Um, but I did wind up uh, humanely killing those animals. I don't know. Uh, just I kill them really quick. They get uh, a blunt force trauma to the head, and uh, they're now kind of decomposing and becoming fertilizer, to be perfectly honest. So I have to stop the animals before they get into the pond or before they reproduce um, so that I don't have another huge population of cane toad tadpoles in the pond. So that, oh, here, by the way, look what I pulled out. There you go. Those are cane toad eggs. I pulled them out. Um, I scooped all of them out and that's how I've been controlling the uh, situation. And in fact, guys, you know, I want to throw these out. I let them dry out and then I'm just going to throw them away. But that's it. Cane toad eggs drying out right there. Pretty nuts, huh? So that's what I do, Cindy and uh, Rainy. So this was a kind of strange ass Camp Cannon, don't you think? Uh, we sat for a little bit. We talked about morphs. You guys know how I feel about them. Um, you know, I realized I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because I accepted that gift of that albino tortoise. Um, but I can tell you that I'm not interested in getting any more. Um, I really do like animals that are born the way they should uh, be because they're better suited to living outdoors here in Florida. I love little Angel, but Angel requires some special care. Uh, so there you have it. You know my feelings. Um, super, super generous gift. I'm certainly happy, but it's, you know, just uh, how I feel about morphs. And then, of course, guys, we finished up with the cane toads. And uh, there's some more. Little guy right there bopping around. Oh, man. Hey, listen, if you like the videos, go on over to patreon.com slash camp cannon. You can get your question answered right here on the channel. Just go check it out. Uh, we appreciate your guys' support. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend, wherever you may be, and uh, that the weather is clearing up. We're uh, heading into spring, baby, in the northern hemisphere, so things are warming up nicely. All right, well, folks, I'm going to take a little wander around the camp. I hope you guys had a good time today. Sorry about the ramble. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll talk to you later. So long. He hasn't really freaked out, but he's never seen, I don't think he's ever seen a natural colored rabbit before.